have a good education. It's funny how that happens suddenly. When it's important, we find a way to get it done. Right? A loved one needs a medical procedure. Right? Do we go to the trouble to find the best doctor possible to get the job done? We find somebody who's going to give us the bargain. We wheel and deal with those medical procedures. I don't know, this guy's got to beat by 10 bucks. Returning the body of someone will be cared for to the earth, no matter what the cost. That's a sign of love. Do you burn the things you love? Seriously, that's a fair question. Did you, how many, when your pet died, who, who burned their pets? Who put them out in the barbecue? Who put their, who put their pet on the barbecue? And you all stood around there and just lit the barbecue and watched it just, did you do that? But how many buried your pet? And why'd you do that? Out of love. The things that we love, we bury. That's why at Faith with Life's first lessons in mortality, every one of you, whether it was the goldfish, which maybe sometimes is very on sea, <laughs> but, uh, but if you had like a little bunny or hamster or something, of course, that's what you did. You, you, you put them in a box and you dug a hole and you, and you, buried, you buried them, you didn't put them on the barbecue. A burial and cremation usually reflect two radically different points of view, two radically different attitudes, two mutually exclusive ways of seeing the world and understanding our place in this world. Decomposition and burning are vastly different from one another. They're vastly different from one another. In many ways, they're, they're opposites. They're opposites. How about the decomposition of a plant or a living creature? What does it do? It creates fertilizer. It creates fertilizer. What it does is it sits, assists in future life and growth. Right? The intrinsic elements of the matter are not changed. It's given back to the ground for a productive end, a fruitful end. No, no wonder the Talmud compares burial to a type of planting. That's how it's described in the Talmud. But cremation, on the, on, on the other hand, leaves only what? Burnt ashes. Its elements are forever changed, and almost entirely whatever elements there are, are burned off. Try burning a seed before you plant it. Who's ever done that? That worked for you? How's that? Yeah, just light like a like a put it on a candle and burn the seed, and then go plant it. Does that work? Does that help? It? No, no, of course not. No, nothing's going to grow that way. And choosing cremation, humanity shows its power. But to what end? What you're doing is you're taking the matter into your own hands. Yeah, you are. You're taking matter into your own hands. Now, the message of creation is the side of man as conqueror using fire and technology to interfere with and control nature rather than peacefully accept it. The message of burial is one of respect for the cycle of nature. When burying the remains of loved ones, we calmly return what we have received. Clearly, the witness of Torah is for burial over burning. Clearly, that's the witness of Torah. The obligation to bury is so strong when you read the Torah that even the high priest who zealously avoided all contacts with any form of death because he would be unclean, must personally give the dead a proper burial if no one else would do it. That's how important it was in the temple. I know it's a rough one today, guys, but you have to think about it. We're all going to fill in that, that sentence. When I die, we all have to fill that in. We all have to answer it. And if you're going to, you're going to claim to be a born again spiritual believer and a follower of Torah, our responsibility is to see what the scripture says in this matter. Roughly 2,000 years ago, Roman historian Tacitus wrote this that Jews bury 
rather than burn their dead. And even today, even today in Israel, the Israel Defense Force spends enormous amounts of time, energy, and money, and resources trying to ensure a proper burial for its Jewish soldiers. <coughs> Jews, will fly, Jews will fly around the world to bury a Torah scroll. Are humans more important than a Torah scroll? I think so. I think so. You know, I want to wrap this up with this. In Jewish thought, the body and the soul are not enemies. They're not at odds. The body enables the soul to dwell in this world, to bring meaning to our daily lives. Without the body, the soul can't complete its mission. So what does that say? Body and soul are partners. Body and soul are partners. And I believe how we choose to treat our bodies upon death, it's deep. I believe it's a reflection of how we feel about our own spiritual condition. I really believe that. Where trends bring deception, the Torah brings redemption. When you die, let your last decision on earth be a witness, not of eternal judgment, punishment, curse, but let your last decision when you die be a witness of God's eternal resurrected promise for us realized in the death and burial and resurrection of our Messiah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, when I die, the clock is ticking and we are decaying now and it is within your will when we come into this world and within your will when we leave this world. You are the same yesterday, today, forever. All is within your sovereignty and control. So Father, forgive us when we try to take matters into our own hands. So Father, to try to subvert a process that you've initiated from the beginning, though Father brought about by our sinfulness. But still then again, Father, we continue the cycle, soon we will be redeemed. But part of that redemption, Father, requires us to be buried. And yes, the soul leaves and we get a transformed body. But until that time, Father, our soul is in this body. And they are not at odds. They work together to accomplish your will in these days. And Lord, there's much that needs to be accomplished. Father, as we make plans for the time when we die, I pray we show, Father, our submission to you even in death. Father, we allow the process to continue to attend. And that, Lord, what is left behind will be something that will help to birth something new, something fruitful, something that brings life. We surrender all to you, Father, even unto death. So we thank you in Yeshua's name for this word. And I pray, Father, that those who have thought one way maybe rethink that decision. The Shem Yeshua Adonai in the congregation says, Give a Yahweh, Sadonai, Sadonai, Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and he would grant you his shalom. But Shem Yeshua Adonai and the congregation says, Amen. Amen. Amen.